What's up YouTube? How are you doing today? Chana D, your Techno Dad here, and in today's video, we're going to be going back to our Home Theater Basics series and talking about something very important. How much power do speakers need? And we're going to get into it right after the jump. And I'm back. Now, if this is the kind of content you're looking for on YouTube, you should consider subscribing and don't forget to hit that bell so you don't miss a beat. Now that that's out of the way, let's get into it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so this is a topic that I know a lot of people want to know more about. So let's just dive right in. How much power do your speakers need? So how do we figure this out? Now, when we're looking at specs on a speaker, we're looking at a bunch of different numbers. We've got the wattage number in RMS. We've got the wattage number in a peak value. We've got resistance measured in ohms, whether it's eight ohms, four ohms, six ohms, two ohms, something like that. And then we have a sensitivity rating, which is usually labeled as decibels. Now that's the one we're gonna look at today, sensitivity. So now when we're looking at a sensitivity rating, it is stated in decibels. So you'll find that online when you're looking at the specifications or the spec sheet of a speaker, you'll find a rating of a certain amount of decibels for its sensitivity. Now I've gone ahead and prepared slides and you guys know how much I like slides. So I've prepared you some slides to help illustrate the point. So let's start off with a sensitivity rating of 88 decibels. What does this mean? So how you read an 88 decibel sensitivity rating is this 88 decibels at one watt per one meter. Okay. Seems simple enough, right? Now, what does that mean? Well, if we go to the next slide. It means at one watt of power and at one meter away, you should be hearing 88 decibels. Okay. That is the volume level that you're going to get with one watt of power at one meter away. Okay. This is all well and good. What volume do we need our home theater to be at? So THX reference volume level is 105 decibels. 105 decibels and if you guys know what like 95 to 100 decibels sound like that's loud so 105 is really loud how do we get from 88 to 105 so here's the thing to go up just three decibels we need to double the power double it that sounds pretty crazy doesn't it so if we're starting here at our base 88 decibel sensitivity one watt per one meter if we go up to two watts we get 91 decibels. Then we have to double the wattage again, four watts to get 94 decibels. So as we can see at the slide here, 106 decibels is 64 watts. And that's gonna be pretty loud. Now, let's say we had a speaker that had a lower sensitivity rating. It was less sensitive. It has a lower decibel rating, 86 decibels. Now we're starting off lower. Now, if we look at where we need to find the 105, it's going to be over 64 Watts. Now let's check out another scenario where we have a speaker that's more sensitive. So it has a 92 decibel sensitivity rating and look at that 104 is 16 Watts. So 105 is just going to be a little bit more than that. So now we can draw a conclusion from that. The higher the sensitivity rating, the more sensitive the speaker is, the less wattage you are going to have to put into the speaker. Let's now take a look at the speakers I have. Klipsch RP280F, floor standing speaker, uh, dual eight inch drivers. It's got 150 watt RMS rating. So we start at 98 decibels at the one meter. Now we go up three decibels and that's gonna put us at 101 at two watts. Now at four watts, we're gonna get 104 decibels, four watts, that's it. That's pretty crazy. We're just above four watts and we're gonna hit that 105 THX reference sound level. That's pretty insane, isn't it? So if you are speaker shopping out there, you definitely might wanna look at that sensitivity number because you're gonna need less power to run those speakers when you have a speaker that's got a higher sensitivity rating. Now, all of this information you could have got anywhere on the internet. Why is my information different? It is because I went a step further and I did a test because I really want to know at one watt of power at a distance greater than one meter, 
what is my sound level going to be where I'm sitting? Now, I know everybody's configuration is different and their room size is different. And I sit about 10 feet away from the speakers. So we're talking just a little over three meters. I went ahead and bought myself a decibel meter. I was gonna use the one in my cell phone because it was free, but I have to shoot the video with my cell phone and my iPad, I was using both at the time, so couldn't really use my cell phone. I went ahead and bought a decibel meter, and here's some B-roll of me measuring it up and getting everything right. Now I had to do this when nobody was at home because it's pretty loud in there. Now another item I got for this test, and I think the biggest piece of equipment that I could have bought for this test are these right here. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, earplugs. Because I need to save my hearing. And you guys at home, don't do this without any earplugs, okay? I am a trained professional. Probably say don't try this at home, kids. Because you might either damage your equipment or your ears. So I played some of my tracks on FLAC on the Ilpo UDP-203. Going straight into the Denon. And the Denon was set on stereo. So I get the full amount of wattage coming out of my speakers. And so I played it and turned up the volume until the decibel meter hit 98. In my case, it was 98.8 at one meter away. So the next thing I did was I backed it up. Now we're at two meters away, same song, same volume level coming out of the Denon, and the decibel meter reads 95.3. So what happened there? We lost 3.5 decibels moving one meter back. So then we moved back another meter. So now we're three meters away, and I got a reading of 92.2. So it looks like we lost another 3.1 decibels getting back to that three meter mark. To pump out 105 decibels, give or take one or two, over to my seating area, I need to add another six decibels from the original, you know, one meter per one watt rating. So if we go back to the slide of my speaker, we need to add six decibels onto the decibel level we're trying to reach at the couch or at the listening area, whatever you like to call it. So if we go from 104 decibels at four watts, we need to hit 110 decibels at 16 watts. Now that doesn't seem like a lot, but that's only because my speakers have a higher sensitivity rating. Now let's go back to the other slide and go with that 88 decibel sensitivity rating on that one speaker. And to get that extra six to get to 112 decibels, we need to be pushing 256 watts to that speaker. Damn, that's a lot. That's a lot of wattage. All right, so let's figure out what all this is saying. I know I threw a whole bunch of numbers and slides at you today. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just wanted to let you guys know exactly what it is you need to look at or think about when you're buying speakers and amplifiers and all that kind of stuff. What I learned is that it's very beneficial to have speakers that have a higher sensitivity rating. Now I know this is not always ideal, like there's budgetary constraints, there's uh, size constraints, like are you going for bookshelves because there's no room? And then there's always like the, you know, the spouse factor, can't forget about the spouse factor, you know? There are a lot of factors that go into play when you're setting up a home theater, especially if it's going to be in your living room like mine is, that you need to think about. Like how far away are you? And are these speakers going to be putting out enough volume to get to your sitting area? Now, of course, you know, 105 decibels is loud, okay? I don't even think I wanna get all the way up to 105 decibels. I got it up to like 82. I think I listened to some Sade, you know, that, that got up a little over 90. I definitely wouldn't do that on a regular basis. And I would definitely have to do that when nobody else is home because a, my wife's gonna complain about it. And B, I don't wanna show my teenager because he's gonna be like, oh, it's cool to turn it up this loud and who knows what's gonna happen or what he can do when I'm not here. Because the last thing I wanna do is come home to some fried tweeters, you know what I mean? All right, so that pretty much wraps it up for this video. I hope it helped you guys out in figuring how much power you're gonna to need to run your speakers and get that volume over to your listening area. Like I said before, there's a lot of factors at play, so definitely think about these when you're doing your shopping for your speakers and your amplifiers. Now I know we need to get to the all-encompassing 
how to match speakers and amplifiers. And I did want to get to that video, but I needed everyone to hear this information first before we get into that video. And that pretty much wraps it up for this video. If you liked it, go ahead, smash that like button, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel using the button in the middle of your screen. Once again, my name is Chana D. I'm your techno dad, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.